Hi, my name is Philip Cart. and I'm an assistant professor um, here in the School of Mechanical Materials Engineering. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Autodesk Fusion 360 to do stress analysis. So when you open up uh, Fusion 360, you'll see something like this. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, I've created a folder where I'm going to upload this, um, this drone, this CAD file. And um, so you can draw the CAD yourself, um, but I'm just going to assume that uh, I already have it. So I have this example um, drone, a simple one in this step format. So I'm going to upload that. Okay, finally it's uploaded. So I can close this dialog box. Now see my, my drone over here. And so if I right click on that and click open, uh, it'll open that CAD model here in the window. So as I said, you could just create this uh, here and now, but um, someone else has created this for me. So before we go to the simulation, uh, there's a couple of things we might do. So one is we might set the material uh, part itself, and um, set the material for the part. And then the other one is uh, we might simplify the part in some way. So if I right click on my body here, you can see a uh, physical material. If I click on that, it'll open up a small window like this. I think by default, it's set to steel. So if we just look at whatever material you want to use, if it's some sort of plastic or metal. So let's assume maybe it's some type of aluminum. So if I just um, drag that aluminum across, and then that sets the part. I mean, so you can see there's very many different types. And um, so you need to check whatever material you're considering making it out. Um, Finally, um, going to simplify the part in some way. So in a stress analysis, um, you can get artificial stress concentrations if you have very sharp corners. So in reality, there's no, it won't be possible to manufacture a perfectly sharp corner, yeah, but that's a good thing. So everything has a fillet or a radius in reality. So it's actually important to capture that, that true radius. And generally it's good to have uh, uh, large radii because it reduces stress concentrations. So this is meant to represent a simple drone body and this is one of the arms. So we're just going to do an analysis to see well if there's loading up like the one of the arms from the, from the thrust, what kind of stress concentrations might we get. So this is the top of the drone here and the thrust will be applied up this way. So we might expect to get some bending concentrations here. So we don't want to have any sharp features which may amplify those stress concentrations. So I'm just going to fill it a couple of things here. So I'm going to click the fill it option and I'm going to just left click and then hold and shift. I'll left click again, select that edge, I'll rotate it around and do the same thing on this edge and this edge. And I'll set it to something like a centimeter, 10 millimeters. So if I I feel that it's smooth and some of those features a bit more. Okay, so now we're ready for the simulation. So if we go to simulation. Now the first time uh, you open this, it'll, it'll ask you what type of study you want to perform. And so we're going to do two studies. So the first one, the standard one, is going to be called static stress analysis. So this is what we, when people say uh, stress analysis, most of them, they just mean that static linear stress analysis. So we're going to apply some loads, assume nothing moves too much, and look at the stress concentrations. And afterwards, we're going to come back and do a buckling analysis. So if you have particularly thin parts, then the uh, static analysis can be invalid. So uh, what can happen is the part will buckle before it gets to those loads and uh, um, may in fact fail at a much lower load than the static analysis has. So it's, if you have a thin part, it's good to do both. So we'll do static stress analysis. So click on that. Let's just check our materials. So there's a couple of things we have to set. We can set our materials, we can set our loading of boundary conditions or part constraints. Um, and then we have to make something called a mesh before we do the analysis. So if I go to materials here, click on this little pencil, you can see it's set to aluminium because we set the material as aluminium. And you can see the study material is set to aluminium. We could overwrite that if we wanted, but I'll leave it to be the same as the material we set. Click this little button here and it shows the sort of properties. So I guess 
and the critical ones um, for this static stress analysis would be the um, modules, so it's about 70 gigapascals, and then the, the strengths, the real strengths of the ultimate strengths. So this will say when the material starts to break. So we can see that they're of the order of uh, around 300 megapascals. So we want our stresses to be well below 300 megapascals. Okay, so that's fine. So now we're going to constrain it. So we're going to assume a, a worst case scenario here. So I'm just going to pick the full um, bottom uh, of the uh, drone. So I'm going to assume the bottom of the drone is just being held down by some weights to payload. So I'm going to assume that, that that can't move. So this is pretty extreme. In reality, it won't be that extreme. So I'm going to select that and say that X, Y, and Z displacements will be zero on that surface. Then I'm going to go to loads. And it says you force, and then I'm going to select this little end surface here, not just the edge, but the actual surface. And I'm going to apply a load um, in the positive y direction, representing uh, one of the uh, the propellers or the turbines. So let's assume each one generates a couple of newtons of force. So let's add the two newtons, but you, you can look that up for the particular uh, motors you have. So remember, if there's four of four, um, Four arms, then this will be just quarter, one quarter of the total thrust. So this is going to be constrained here. We're going to apply a load here, so we expect this arm uh, to bend, to bend in this direction as it goes around. So that's our load setup. So before we perform the stress analysis um, using this finite element method, uh, the final thing we have to do is set up something called a mesh. So what is a mesh? So basically, um, the way the finite element method works is it splits your part up in, into these. Um, small bits, typically like triangles or tetrahedra, like those are pyramids, um, and it tries to um, enforce um, some governing, uh, governing, governing equation on each one of these little elements. So in this case, it basically is applying Newton's second law. So it's going to split this part into little bits, and it's going to apply Newton's second law, F equals MA, or if it's static, sum of all the forces equals zero on each one of these elements, and then figure out what the displacement and stress distribution is that will satisfy all these things. So if we just leave it to the default ones here, that's okay. Right click and go generate mesh. And default settings are pretty coarse. So I just orbit around. So you can see now it's split it up into a tetrahedron. So that's a triangle based pyramid basically. So initially we'll, we'll leave it as this coarse, uh, coarse mesh to begin with. So now we're ready to perform analysis, so we can do it up here or down here. So if I right click on results and go pre-check, just in case we set something up wrong, everything's fine. And, and right click and solve. And so with the education license, um, we can either solve locally on our computer or we can solve on the cloud. So you might as well do it on the cloud because we get free credits. So I think the education license lets you run jobs that cost 15 credits at most for free. And so you can see it's only five credits for this, click solve. And so then that will start solving on the cloud. Such a coarse mesh, a couple of funny elements, it should just take less than a minute to do this. Okay, it's done now. So you can see this little window popped up. Let me just close this job window. So you can see it has some summary. It says the actual minimum safe factor is 15. So, um, Inventor is going to compare the max stress in your part to uh, the strength of the material, like the yield strength of the material. And that it's going to define a factor of safety based on, on that. So you want your max stress to be much less than the yield strength or the ultimate tensile strength. So in this case, it's saying we get at least a factor of 15, which is normally pretty, uh, pretty large. You can see it's, it's suggesting it's probably over engineered. The part's too big or too, big or too uh, large. So you can just close this one. So, okay. Factor of safety has been shown at the moment. That's not that exciting uh, to see. So it's maybe nice to look at some of the deflections and the stresses. So over here, set a factor of safety. Let's look at displacement. This is the magnitude of displacement. So you can see, and um, in terms of millimeters, it's 0 0.0037 of a millimeter. So we're only talking about a few microns. So 3.7 microns. So um, the, the diameter of a piece of your hair is, is like 50 microns. So this, this is barely even moved. So Inventor, what it's doing here is it's magnifying the deformation just to show you the, the, the type of deformation that you might expect, but this isn't a true deformation. So up here at the top, 
you click this, this shows the actual definition. If you click this button up here, it shows you adjust it just to see what it looks like. So you can see, okay, as expected, the end of this beam moves the most, that will bend the most, and then it won't be moving over here where we've set it can. Now let's look at the uh, stresses. So we look at stress. And there's different stresses. There's bond knees, uh, XX, Y, Y, all those things, uh, and principal stresses. Typically for metals, ductile metals, aluminium and steel, uh, we look at what's known as the von Mises stress. So the von Mises stress, it's a scalar that basically indicates how close the material is to a yielding or permanently deformed, which we don't want. And so this yield and this von Mises stress, we can compare directly to the yield strength or the yield stress. So we want to be much less than that. So if you remember, I think our yield stress, uh, I can't remember what it was, was it 300 megapascals? So you can see we're at 0.3, so we're, we're well below. So you can see where the max stress is occurring, it's just occurring at the bottom of the part where it's joined, and that's where I put the fillets in to try to reduce that because I was expecting that. And then you get some high stresses up there. And another one to look at, for more brittle materials, they tend to fail with fractures rather than permanent deformation. <coughs> so the maximum principal stress uh, can be a better one to look at. So you can see they're pretty similar, and um, pretty similar looking uh, distributions. And so if you're not sure, just look at both of those. Maximum principle on the bottom knees, check both of them, make sure both of them are much less than your, uh, your yield strength. Okay, and before I go on to do the booking analysis, there's one thing to mention here. So um, in stress analysis models like this, there are two main causes of error. There's two main reasons why this model won't agree with what you see in reality. Um, so one of those is called numerical errors. And primarily what we're talking about is meshing errors here. So we saw our mesh, so I turn it back on. Because so our mesh here is relatively coarse, the triangles are quite big. And so as we make those triangles are better either smaller, these meshing errors become smaller. So that's something we can easily control. We just rerun the model with a smaller and um, with smaller elements. And, and if the results stop changing, and as in it doesn't change as we keep reducing it and reducing it, then we can say the meshing errors are small. So that's something we can control. Uh, the other main cause of errors, they're called um, idealization errors or mathematical modeling errors or assumption errors. So that's, for example, if, um, they come from three sources. So uh, the geometry, if we use the wrong geometry, it's not exactly like reality in some way. And um, the material properties, maybe the type of aluminum or carbon fiber is not described exactly. And then the last one is the loading. Maybe the, the way it's fixed at the bottom here, that's not really what uh, is exactly happening. So that can be another source of errors. So changing the mesh density won't affect those errors. We just have to make the correct assumptions. So typically what's good to do is after running analysis, you look at the max stress. So in this case is 0.37 megapascals. So you might go back to your mesh, right click, and go your mesh settings, right click that pencil. And then you just might decrease the element size. You can also, if you click absolute size, and what's often good to do is just run it with three different sizes. So for example, run it with 10 mils, five mils, and two and a half mils. So half in each time. And if the results are not changing so much, you can be confident that the, at least the mesh errors are small. And so that's one thing you can control is, is the mesh errors. So you might just set that to, go back again, set it to uh, five, that's okay. Right click and regenerate your mesh. And you'll see the elements got smaller now. So this, these mesh errors will be getting smaller. We can recheck, everything's fine. And go to solve. And on the cloud, five credits, no problem. Solve. And then that, that, will, uh, that will run. I can just close that and leave that in the background. And so while that's running, I'm going to create another uh, analysis. And I'm going to do this booking analysis. So. This static analysis says we're nowhere near causing this type of yield. It's, it's all ranging. Um, however, if we have very thin parts, we can see relatively thin walls here, and um, that static analysis may be invalid. So it won't capture um, uh, booking uh, rules. So for example, if I have a sheet of uh, aluminum and I'm pushing, I'm pushing the end of trying to, trying to squash it from the ends, like a sheet of aluminum. So if that's a relatively thick sheet, and I apply a load, I can see what the stress in that sheet would be. But as I, I make that sheet thinner and thinner, and at 
some point it will just book it will book a, like a stress much lower um, than maybe would be expected if you assume it weren't to book it. Uh, so the booking analysis, if you've seen parts, it's good to do that and just check the booking won't occur. And if booking won't occur, then your static analysis is, is valid. Okay, this uh, model has finished here. So um, if I close here, you remember the max stress previously was 0.37. So now with a half and yellow size, or even a little bit more, it's 0.426. It went up a little bit, but not too much. It's still stayed in the same location. So this is fine. I probably run a smaller measure then and check it's still not changing. So we're going to make another simulation. So on our simulation here, I right click and go new simulation study. And I'm going to pick a buckle analysis this time. Then go create. So if you see here, we have a study one static gas, which we just did, and now we've got a new book now. So the materials will be the same as before, that's fine. And we'll set up our loading in the same way also. So we have to do that again on second part. Uh, second space with the zero on that part. And then loads. I'm going to dip over here the surface. And then I'm going to apply a load of two newtons again on the floor. And um, I'm going to create a mesh before. So I'm going to use our absolute size. I'm going to use five millimeters like before. And I'm going to go generate mesh. Apologies for all the commotion in the background. And I'm going to go uh, pre check. So just like the static houses, and then I'm going to go solve. As you can see, it's a booking, it's ready, it's solved. What the booking analysis is going to give us, and rather than the stress distribution, it's basically going to say um, whether the current loading will cause the booking or not. Um, and if it's not going to cause booking, it will tell us about what, um, how much loading will cause booking. So what factor would we have to multiply our load by um, to cause booking? And also to show us when it does buckle, the sort of shape it might make. So in the same way, if you push a piece of paper together when it buckles, you might expect a bump in, in the middle. But if you keep pushing together, you might expect uh, uh, more uh, oscillations. Uh, so um, if we look at um, total space in booking mode. So if you see here, it's given us three booking modes, which are two different shapes. So it's saying the booking mode one, which has been shown at the moment, and I'll scroll it down so you can see a little bit better. It says that will occur when the load is multiplied by 16,841. So it's saying we're nowhere near booking this part. We'd have to apply a load that's 16,000 times greater than two newtons, uh, in this case, to cause booking. So in reality, if you did apply that load, um, the part would just break before it would ever book up. So in this case, booking is not going to be an issue. And um, let me just scroll around to, to, to show you uh, what it gives you. So once again, it's, it's adjusting the deformation so you can see what it might look like. But it's basically saying when this part eventually would buckle, what would happen is just in here, um, the surface will like um, will depress uh, inwards and it'll create, create this sort of uh, buckling phenomenon. So if, if you imagine uh, if you have a, if you have a rectangular cardboard box or something, as you bend the ground, at some point the sides will just bend in and it will collapse and you get these waves in the sides. And it's also the same booking mode too. If you go to a higher load, you might get a slightly different uh, type of booking. And, then, and that's if you multiply the load by minus. So if we uh, push, push rather than bold, and then booking mode three is a slightly uh, different shape. And so by default, it looks up three booking modes. And typically the higher booking modes require higher forces, so we don't we want to play about the first one. Okay, so that is your uh, stress analysis and booking analysis. Mm -hmm.